Did you know that the first iPhone sent hundreds of thousands of children to the ER? By understanding what happened with that first iPhone, you're going to better understand what the real dangers of 5G are, you're going to better understand how economists understand causality, and you're gonna understand how to become a better parent using economics. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power where we look at the power of markets and economics to shape our world. And once you understand that power, you will understand the consequences of the choices we make, which will help you make meaningful change in your community and in your personal life. And I think this one is a fantastic one to understand your personal life and its relation to economics because what could be more personal than children going to the ER because of iPhones. I first came across this idea that the iPhone was hurting children back in 2013 when I read an article in the Wall Street Journal that documented the increase of smartphones with the increase in child injuries. There had been an increase in children going to the ER, and it coincided with the advent of the iPhone. You have probably heard the phrase, correlation does not imply causation. And that was exactly the problem with this article. They had no way to causally connect what was going on with smartphones and what was going on with child injuries. But I knew there was a way to go into this. So how could we test this? Well, the first thing you might ask is, let's look at parents who have smartphones and what happens with their children, and then look at parents without smartphones and see what happens with their children, compare it and get some sort of estimate of how smartphones are affecting interactions with children. Ideally, what you would want to see is a parent playing with their kids and another world in which that parent is playing with the kids on a smartphone and then you compare the differences of what happens in those two worlds to get an idea of what the causal effect of that smartphone is. If you could see this multiverse where you have the same parent but in one case with a phone and the other case without then you know it's not the parent's characteristics it's not whether they're a good parent or a bad parent it's just the fact that there's a smartphone there. So far, unfortunately, we can't use the multiverse to test these kind of things because we do not have the technology or possibly even a reality that supports it. However, we can borrow from the medical literature and do randomized control trials or RCTs. This is where economists shine. We love finding ways to test these theories in complicated situations where we can't actually run an RCT. We like to look for a situation that has caused something similar to an RCT where some people have access to the technology and others don't and then compare those groups of people to see what happens. When the iPhone 3G came out in 2008, it was not only a significant technological breakthrough, it was significantly cheaper than even the iPhone before it and many other comparable cell phone models. There was incredibly rapid adoption of the iPhone 3G, but there was a catch. Just like today, 5G is available only in a few areas, 3G was only available in a few areas in 2008. Having 3G is going to affect whether you get an iPhone or not. So what we can do is say an area that had 3G had higher iPhone adoption rates than areas that didn't have 3G. And then we can compare injury rates across those two areas to see if there's any change. If we get enough of these areas, on average, there shouldn't be much different between them, especially affecting childhood injuries. So if we see childhood injuries go up in 3G areas, we're going to attribute that increase to the iPhone. There's some good supportive evidence for this. If you look at the spread of 3G throughout the United States, you'll see it closely matches the increase in child injuries reported by the Wall Street Journal. But we don't have to rely just on the 3G, no 3G comparison. We can look at differences in age groups. My oldest son is very capable when he's on the playground and climbing all over the playground without any risk to himself. Whereas my younger son can hardly go through the monkey bars without me helping him. So if I'm not paying attention to that younger son, he's going to be at a much higher likelihood of getting injured compared to my older son. Finally, we can look at activities. If distracted parents really are the reason these kids are getting hurt, then there are going to be activities where kids are going to be more susceptible to injury because their parents are distracted and ones where parental supervision doesn't matter at all. For instance, if your daughter's running around playing soccer and you yell at her to watch out, it might be hard for her to hear you because so much stuff is going on. So parental supervision probably doesn't matter as much in soccer as it does say like on the playground. So what do the data say? When we look at 3G areas and non-3G areas and we look at older kids versus younger kids, we're seeing that injury rates for children under five are going up by 5% when 3G gets to that area. That's a pretty big increase and it's controlling for all those other factors that might be affecting childhood injuries. 
If we look across all age groups, we see that the youngest kids have the largest increase in injuries and that that effect weakens as the kids get older, just as we would expect as kids learn more self-awareness and don't need as much parental supervision. But the thing that really gets me is what happens in the activities. So if we look at playgrounds that are at school versus playgrounds when parents are watching them, we see no changes in playground injuries at school, and we see a large increase in playground injuries when their parents are watching them. This is incredibly consistent with parents being distracted by cell phones. Similarly, we see no increase in sports injuries. Even in those areas where injuries are going up for children, we're seeing nothing happening to sports injuries because we don't expect it to. Parents don't have much input in those cases. But the one that gets me and the one that breaks my heart is what happens to poisonings. When are kids most likely to be poisoned? Probably when they're exploring underneath the sink. Who are the kids most susceptible to that? Well, kids that are younger than one aren't mobile. They just lay there, so they're not getting under the sink. We shouldn't see anything happen to poisonings for them. My four-year-old is already old enough to understand that he should not go under the sink. So that's not going to be four and up. We're not going to see any changes to injury. But it's hey. that in-between group, that one to three or four, where those kids are going to be getting <clears throat> under the cupboards and probably getting into things that hey. they shouldn't. And I have a pretty good sense no. of this because my two-year-old daughter is constantly getting into things that she shouldn't be getting into. And what do the data say about poisonings? It's that exact pattern. We see no increase for children that are between zero and one, no increase for children that are older than four, but in that one to three range, we're seeing this huge spike in poisonings once 3G comes to a city. This is pretty clear evidence that the iPhone was distracting parents from supervising their kids, and as a result, they were going under the sink and poisoning themselves. So if you wanna know what the real danger of 5G is, it's having super fast internet to distract us from our surroundings. And if you wanna use economic to become a better parent, just put that phone away and pay attention to your kids. Check out my other video on how Pokemon Go distracted drivers and caused massive amounts of property damage. Be sure to subscribe so that way you can see how economics and markets shape our world. We'll see you next time.